Hi, I'm John Underhill, and this is another short video in the Bandit series. What I call the Bandit series is uh, short videos on how you can utilize the new stainless steel Bandit component set exclusively at ExoticBlanks.com and utilize its design features to make unique, custom, one-of-a-kind pens. Now in this video, I'm going to show you how I will take a snake skin and add some accents to an already turned pen. Let's get started. All right, so here we have the Bandit Rollerball. And I'm a huge fan of this, this pen set uh, because it offers so much opportunity for customization. Now I've already got some black ash burl turned down. And what I want to do now is I want to utilize the channel in the center band to build up something to complement this blank. I'm also going to utilize the top center cap here and show you how I would make uh, a custom finial so in this video, we're going to focus on the center band. And the nice thing about this center band set is you can buy extras at Exotic Blanks. So if you want to make something and then after you get it done, you realize, you know what, it's just not the look I was going for, you can set it aside and then make another one and you've got that other one for later. So when you receive this, what you're going to have is the nib and the center. It's all going to be screwed together. So when you unscrew that, you're going to be able to utilize this channel here. And what we want to do is take this apart and this will just pop apart. Sometimes you got to wiggle them a little bit, but that's going to pop apart. This is plastic, so you want to remove that. This is where your threads are that thread onto the metal uh, end of your, your lower center, uh, your lower tube. So we're going to remove that so that we don't damage that. And we're dealing with just the stainless steel parts here. And so for this video in this pen, I've decided I'm going with the small piece of pygmy rattlesnake skin and I think it's going to complement the wood well. So uh, rather than having the whole pen being snake skin, these, these are very small snakes and this was a small scrap that I had left over, I'm going to just utilize what this skin has to fill this channel and be able to complement this pen. So let me show you how to do that. All right, so the first thing we have to do is we have to worry about how deep this channel is in reference to how thick our material is. Uh, I don't like to have to build this up too thick because it just allows more opportunity to have air bubbles or something settle in the glue that I don't want. So I like to fill this in a little bit if my material is going to sit too deep in the channel. Also, we have to worry about whether or not this is going to be uh, transparent so we don't want the color of the stainless steel to interfere with the natural color of what we're working with so this isn't going to be too bad but if we were working with say printed paper or something uh, card front or or anything like that um, it might be an issue so what you're going to do is first you have to figure out the depth of this or the width of your channel so a couple easy ways right you can put a tape measure up there and measure it or you can take a scrap piece of paper, you can lay this on it, press down real hard, and that will leave you an indentation. So then you can come back with a pencil, and you can darken your indentation so that you know that's the width that you need. And then you can either cut it out of paper or cardstock. So I cut this out of cardstock. And now what we need to do is figure out how long that has to be. So what I'll do is I'll place a piece of tape, just a small piece of tape, on the end of this strip that I cut. And I'll come in here in the channel. And this can be a little difficult, challenging here. But I'll, I'll tape that down and wrap this. And sometimes if the tape is a little too wide, it might be an issue. Uh, or you might have to trim your your paper. Uh, but I want to wrap this so I know how long of a strip I need because I don't want to waste this whole piece of snakeskin by cutting it. So once I get the overlap of the paper, which is right about there, I'm going to come in here and place a small mark so that I know there's my overlap. And I can take this back out and cut my tape off. 
So I know roughly that's how long I need to cut my snake skin. So rather than cutting the whole thing and wasting it, I, on, I know I only need a small strip. It also shows me how wide I'm going to have to cut this. So I can use this as a template, kind of stick it down there and then cut along my edges. Alright, so now that we've got that measured out, we can take something that's fairly see-through, figure out exactly where we want to cut this. Now I want this black spot down the center to be visible, so I'm going to come in here and I'm going to make it just a hair longer than it needs to be. Let's see if we can see through this. Ah yeah, we can see through that. The other challenge is getting it straight on your pattern, right? So we're going to tape this down. And then we're going to come in here and we're going to cut that. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start by cutting the whole end off here. Now I have this piece left that I can use in the next video when I show you how to make the custom finial out of it. So we're just going to take our scissors and we're going to cut down the center of this snake skin. There we go. And then we peel this off. And now we've got the strip that we're going to put down the center channel of our center band. Okay, here's how we're going to set it up on our lathe. All right, obviously, there's a challenge between being able to secure this somewhere on there without having some sort of a special uh, bushing or, or jig. So the easiest that I found, take some 7 millimeter bushings and put on the turn between center shafts. And if you're using a straight manual, you can do the same thing. And then I'm going to use these Delrin bushings in be at the ends of them and what this allows me to do then is slide the tailstock forward lock it down tighten it up a little and now everything is secure and now we can work on that bushing and now I can work on that channel it's gonna hold it in there just where I need it so now what I need to do is in order to put the snake skin in here I need to figure out if I want to build that up any. And right now it looks like there's about an eighth of an inch gap because obviously this is as thin as paper. So I'm going to want to build this channel up a little bit. That way I don't have to fill as much and I don't have to worry about air bubbles in there uh, or any debris that gets between my layers of, of CA. So in order to do that, uh, you have a couple options. You can use masking tape. Um, you can build it up with glue if you want and turn the channel down if you've got a small tool or you want to grind a screwdriver to fit in between there. I'm just going to take that strip of paper that we started with and I'm going to glue it in that channel and then build it up. I'll just turn this until I build up the thickness about half full and then I can put my snake skin on. So to do that I'm going to take a little bit of glue and I'm going to use this glue boost, put a shot in there of glue dry and I'm going to put a little bit of glue on the tape or the paper. And then I'm going to press it in there. And give it a shot of glue dry so that it, it dries. That way I'm not going to pull that paper off the metal as I wrap it around there. Now it's just simply wrap it. And I pull it tight. I'm going to want to stop it just about where I start it which is right there. That way it's not uh, it's not going to be a bump in the tape in the paper is bad. So I'm going to come in here, put a little bit of glue on this paper. I'm going to spray the paper back here with glue dry and I'm just going to wrap it up there. Hold it in place for a bit and let it dry. And then once it dries, I'll simply Tear it off.
So now we have the channel built. It's about half the depth of what it was. And now we can build our snake skin on top of that. Plus, it's going to give us a nice light background so that the snake skin will appear lighter in color and it won't get dark from being on just straight metal. Because a lot of times when you add glue to something, it kind of gets a little transparent because it, it gets wet and then you can see through it. So, which is why we, we paint our brass tubes when we cast. So basically this is the same thing. I'm going to start where the paper finished. That way I'm going to butt right up to it and I'm going to do the same process. But I have to look at this and figure out which side do I want down first. And I'm going to start, because these spots are nicer out here at the end, and I'm going to have a slide overhang. I'm going to start here with this paper. And this is longer than what I needed it because I just built this up, so now the diameter is a little larger. I'm going to need a little more snake skin to go around this. So I, when I cut this, I cut this longer than what I needed. All right, so now we're going to do the same thing again. We're going to put a little dab of, of glue on our skin, and we're going to spray this paper, or vice versa, whichever works for you. Put a little glue on the back of the skin here, and I'm going to come in here, get it between the posts where I want it, and just hold that down. Press it down nice and tight, give it a shot, and now our skin is starting to glue down, right? So now from here on out, it's, it's however you want to do it. You can just apply a little bit of glue in here and wrap it till you get to the end, which is what I'm going to do. Uh, I'm going to actually put glue on the paper. And I'm going to spray the skin. And now I'm just going to wrap. And I'm going to pull it tight enough that any excess glue squeezes out. Till I get to my overlap. Now, as you can see, I'm not going all the way down. I'm going to cut this, I believe, because I like the pattern right here. So I'm going to give this a cut right here because I know I've got a nice overhang. So we'll stick that down. So now I'm going to take a pair of scissors and I'm going to cut this off and then we'll finish gluing it down. I'm going to give my ending spot a little shot of glue dry and then I'm going to apply some glue in here wrap this while I kind of hold it in place and what I'm also doing is I'm pushing the glue forward as I stick this down so you can come in here with a small screwdriver or something flat just be careful not to damage your skin I'm not concerned about getting glue on the steel because I'm going to turn this down. I'm going to build this up and then turn it down anyhow. I just want to make sure that the skin is below the surface of the steel. That way it gives me a small channel to fill with glue. And then I will turn that down smooth and finish it like I would anything else. I'm just going to let the, the tip on the bottle push the glue around. And I'm just going to turn it slightly and let that glue kind of fill itself and then I'm going to stay back about 10 inches give it a couple light sprays because all I want to do right now is get glue around that skin and hold everything in place so now we're just going to build up some layers we're going to let each layer dry as we go and we're going to build up those layers okay so here now I've got it all built up I've applied several layers and I would just go through and touch the edge of the metal rings to make sure that they were below the glue. If, if I push my finger across I run into that metal groove on the other side, that wall, then I know I need to add a little more glue. The nice thing about the CA glue, and I'm using glue boost fill and finish, the nice thing about that is I can build layers over this even after I've turned it or sanded it down. Because we use CA glue to glue the snake skin down, I was able to build my, my layers up immediately. If I were to use any type of Elmer's or stick glue or, or wood glue, anything with moisture in it, I would have to completely wait for that to completely dry. 
and then apply my CA because I don't want to have a water reaction to the, to the fill and finish where it would fog up on me because of the moisture underneath. And because this is stainless steel, I'm not worried about the metal. I'm not going to hurt any finish on the metal. In fact, I'm going to remove any glue that's on the top of it. And it just allows me to smooth this out. Well, that kind of wraps it up, no pun intended. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. If you want to see how I complete the pen with the finial, make sure you check out the second part of this video. Thanks for joining.